It's um, great to be back. Thank you for your prayers and support. I want to really thank uh, our team around here and just everybody who serves and, and keeps everything going. Isn't it wonderful? And, um, but you're greatly missed, and so it's great to be here today. Um, this message is inspired by a couple people, different people I um, ran in contact with when I was in the States. And one of them was just uh, a day before I flew out with Alyssa and Ezekiel and Miley to come back. And I was doing those last minute, oh, I think I need some more Christmas ornaments. And so there's a place called Hobby Lobby. And... Uh, <laughs> And it is extraordinary, really. And this huge store with all, it's all about gifts and projects and crafts and various things. And, and at Christmas time, they have amazing Christmas ornaments. And from when, I don't know, but they run 50% off sale all the time. Um, and so, and their ornaments are fairly reasonable anyway, and, and so I was getting these beautiful um, snowflakes, and they'll go out on the, on the Christmas tree this week, but um, uh, like a pack, they're flat, i got to tell you this, they're flat, and they stack about that, there's 20-odd in there, and the whole thing was $10, and I got 50% off of that, so it's $5, you know, it's such a great deal. So every year, um, I get something from there, and so anyway, I was just shopping along, and, and I met this lady, and uh, she was uh, in this one area, and I'm going higher, lower, that's all right, sweet, I went higher. Okay, um, and she was standing there, and she was um, looking at beautiful royal blue candles, and it was Hanukkah, and so she was preparing for Hanukkah, and she said to me, it's about time the store, because it's Christian-owned, has some Jewish things in it. So I had a wonderful little chat with her, and, and she was very pleased to know that I knew a little bit about Hanukkah. <clears throat> And there's all kinds of ways to spell it and all kinds of ways to pronounce it. So I'm just going to pronounce it my way, which is Hanukkah, okay? And uh, so we just chatted for a little bit, and I got to thinking about Hanukkah and what the difference is and what do they celebrate entirely. And, and then uh, prior to that, just the um, day before that, I went with my father. He goes to a Bible study every week, and this man's name is Dr. Tim. He's a theologian and had a great time sitting in the sessions. Usually go with my dad to do that. It means a lot to him, and, and I was inspired as well as he talked about Jesus, the Son of Man, and because uh, that was the term Jesus enjoyed being taught of or spoken of. He liked to be called the Son of Man. And so from that, my, my desire to say, okay, God, what am I going to say today as we gear up for Christmas and um, go through our traditions? In each family, you have your own set of traditions. It's what you like to do coming up, leading up to that day. Maybe it's Christmas Eve, you like to do something special, or Christmas Day. Um, it could be all kinds of other reasons Try that. <clears throat> but Hanukkah, let me just tell you a little bit about what I know about it. And by any means, I'm not um, an expert, just a few studies. It's an eight-day Jewish festival of lights, celebrated with candle lighting, gifts, and such oil-fried foods as potato pancakes and jelly donuts, and it begins December 6th. And so that's why I'm talking about it today, because today is December 6th. So happy Hanukkah to all of you. And Hanukkah, which means dedication or rededication. It is the festival that commemorates the purification and rededication of the temple, following, following the defilement caused by the Greeks during their occupation of that holy place. Today, the holiday reminds Jews to rededicate themselves, to stand against forces that would destroy Judaism. As, and to keep alive the flame of Jewish religion, culture, and peoplehood so that it may be passed on to the next generation. <clears throat> so that got to me to thinking. It doesn't take me much to think. <laughs> In practicality, is what are you and I doing to preserve what we hold true as a tradition about Christ and his coming? 
the world in which we know it is trying to take Christ out of Christian, Christmas. Or do we all understand that? Do we, are we aware of that? Do we think that that's really happening? It is. Being in America, it's all about Christmas trees and Santa Claus. And it's a real push to take Christ out of Christmas. Let's just celebrate this heathen holiday called Christmas. Let's just celebrate the gift giving and Santa Claus. And I thought about how the Jewish people have taken this festival of lights, it's called, to prepare them and to dedicate, rededicate their life to the ongoing preservation of not only their culture, but it's what they believe. And I thought, what are you and I doing about preserving the culture of Christ in us? Salt is a thing we use to preserve um, things. It preserves uh, meat. It preserves. And we are the salt of the earth. So there's our importance or our reflection, our responsibility is to bring this preserving factor into our nation, our culture, our lives. So what are we rededicating? What are we keeping alive? What traditions are we going to focus on this Christmas season? I love what we do here. We've continued to do Christmas lights because it is just that. We're trying to draw people, just like moths are drawn to a light, not calling people moths, but um, drawing people to, oh, look at the lights. Let's go see. Let's go check it out. And getting them in and getting you and I into this room where they're going to hear the gospel message. They're going to hear a form of the gospel message that will not only hopefully challenge them, but it will impact them. And maybe it will remind them of truly what really matters at Christmas. So who is this child? Who is the Savior? Who is Jesus? Number one, to behold him today as the word. When we think of the Word of God, we many times think of the Bible. It is the Word of God. But Jesus is the Word. And so he is the Word of God. And sometimes we put so much importance on the Bible, which are the words of God, and they lead us to God, but we forget about Jesus, who is the Word. It was John in one, John 1, 1 five, through 5, it says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So when we think of our holiday Christmas season that we're coming into, it's about the Word. It's about Jesus who spoke this world into existence, who created everything. It is about Him. And let's make sure our traditions are about Jesus. It's not about our Christmas pudding. It's not about maybe a turkey or ham or the festivities. Those are the celebration part. But let's focus on why we are celebrating. So the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, that is the purpose for what we do. It's the purpose for our Christmas lights. Actually, it's the purpose for why you and I exist. John the Apostle wrote this, and the ancient Greeks at that time were so fixated on the reality of things. Where did things come from? See, our Greek philosophy originated from a desire to know truth behind what was real. And so at that stage of time, John was actually talking about, okay, this is what is actually behind creation, is the word. And so that is where the, the Greek philosophy at that time was actually coming to the realization, because in their desire for knowledge and truth, they needed to know the reality behind everything. Now in our humanism thinking, you know, it's just kind of what's relative. But back then, it was actually, there's a greater sense of, well, what's behind everything that we see? What's behind? So you and I need to get behind things, not just go along and say, oh, yeah, well, that's fine, and oh, that's good, and that doesn't harm anybody. Find out the truth 
So when we look at the truth, which is Jesus Christ, he is the reality behind everything. And so when somebody tries to take Christ out of Christian, Christmas, sorry, and out of Christians, <laughs> when somebody tries to do that, remember that Christ is the reason for the season. It's just not a catchy little phrase. He is. Now, did Jesus, was he born in December? None of us, well, most of us don't believe that, okay? So it doesn't matter. Don't get stuck on those things. The reality behind what we're doing in our tradition is celebrating Christ, the Word of God. He came and he dwelt amongst us. He is the Word. The ultimate truth, the force that holds it all together, and they, the Greeks, describe this as the logos, the Word. The world is in constant flux. It is impossible to step into the same river twice. True? You can step into the bank of the river and it pretty much be the same bank. But that water flowing underneath your feet or around you is not the same water. That is the flux of the world in which we live today. That is the mind of everybody that is living in this world today. There's such a challenge of thinking that people change, oh, I believe that, or oh, I believe that, or maybe I believe that. The constant is Jesus, and he is the river of God, and so when we step into him, we step into that knowledge and that revelation. Number two, Jesus is not a force. This is, he is flesh. He is a person. When we talk about just the force of Jesus and the power of Jesus and all that, yes, does he have power? Yes, because he's the King of kings, Lord of lords, he's our Savior, he's our Redeemer. Yes, he's powerful, but he is a person. So when we talk about him, we talk about him in the reflective, intimate place that he holds in our lives. So I can get quite um, challenged and offended by somebody dissing my Jesus, true? Because I have a personal relationship with him. The same way if somebody bags David, I have the same reaction, all right? So um, don't you touch that man. <laughs> so he has come to us. He's the creative power of God in action. The word accomplishes his purpose. Let me read this to you, Isaiah 55, 11. It is, the same, it is the same with my word. I send it out, and it will always produce food, fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Now, let you in on a little bit of revelation. It's for years I would think of like, as the word of God goes forth, as God speaks and it goes forth, it will accomplish, it will be fruitful. Do you agree with me? But I was reading that over and over again, and I'm going like, oh, I didn't ever see it this way. God is saying, as I send forth my word, Jesus. Okay, let's put it in the first person here. It is the same with my word, Jesus. I send him out, and he always produces fruit. He will always accomplish all I want him to do. And he will prosper everywhere I send him. So taking it and put it, applying the word, because that's not taken out of context, because he is the word. When we apply him in the first person, it's Jesus. We're sending you forth into our family. I'm not just going to speak a word into my family. I'm sending you forth, God, into my family. I'm sending you forth to, ex to accomplish your perfect will. The word is Jesus. So let's respond to him as the word, not just as a prayer, well, this is how I pray in the name of Jesus. I'm making my request known to God, and I pray in the name of Jesus, and so therefore it should be answered because I pray it correctly. It's not about that. It's about a revelation of an intimate relationship with Jesus to actually say, I'm sending forth you, God. 
your word into this situation. Oh, God, will you accomplish all that you want to accomplish? Will you bring fruitfulness in all that is in my life? So he's a force. He's not a force. He is flesh. He is person. I love this scripture, um, Psalm 33, verse 6. The Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. I love that. The Lord merely spoke. It's like you and I going, hey, good eye, how are you? We merely speak. But when Jesus does, the whole world was created. We've got to get this. That, that is him, who he is. That's the power of him. That is the, the resident ability and that creative power of Jesus. It's just he merely spoke and the world was created. He breathed that word, and all the stars were born. <sighs> Let's follow on the tradition of the word. Let's uphold that word that, oh, my God, Jesus, you're alive. You died for me, but, oh, you rose for me, and you're alive, and you're breathing in my life, and you're breathing into me, and you're giving me hope, and you're giving me a future, God. And, God, when you speak over me, God, it's just like when you created the earth, and you breathed, and the stars just, that's who Jesus is. So when somebody says, let's just take Christ out of Christmas, it doesn't matter. Hello? You're sucking the very life out of the universe if we take Jesus out of something. He holds it all in his hand. By the word of his mouth, it's established. And so therefore, it's like, we've got to contend. We've got to preserve. We've got to hold dear Jesus at Christmas. We've got to celebrate Christmas as if it was exactly when Jesus was born. Okay? You with me on this? Don't get caught up. And, well, I don't know if it's really necessary if we do this, you know. No, every day we celebrate Jesus. Every day is Christmas to you and I. Every day we celebrate the life of Jesus, that he was born as the son of man, so that he could not just redeem my life once, but every single day. Because the word of salvation, the word of forgiveness, is constantly being spoken by him. Aren't we glad? Aren't we glad? Can you imagine if he only forgave us once? Other religions are like that. Think about if God forgave you one time and one time only. The grace and the mercy and the justice of God is far beyond. It's a mystery. It's, a, it's something we will never understand. But in the goodness of God, he gives us a portion. And he says, take me. Even as we've had communion today, eat of me, drink of me, experience who I am. If you experience who I am, you will never, ever be the same. I think some of us need a wake up, a shake up, maybe put on your makeup, and let's just get going here. Let's just believe again. Let's just dream again. Let's just hope again. Let's just put our salvation where it belongs. That's in Christ, understanding what he has done. He is a person. Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent out his word and it healed them, snatching them from the door of death. Can God heal? Yes. Will God heal? Yes. Is he going to heal you? Yes. Is it going to be here on this earth or in the life to come? I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that this life that we put so much importance on is just a mere second. But it's the life yet to come is the most important one. So let's live this life according to how God desires it and let him take care of our physical health, our emotional well-being, and our past. And let's get on to the purposes he has for us in the future. He's given us a future and a hope, and it's where we're to walk in and where to live in is that future and that hope. You with me? John 20, verse 30, 31. 
The disciples saw Jesus do many other miracles, signs, in addition to the ones recorded in this book. The disciples saw Jesus doing all that's recorded and then many others that aren't recorded. They had a first-hand view. Have you ever wanted that first-hand view of something? You know, you're there to experience it. In our world in which we live in today, um, there's cameras, there's videos, there's selfie sticks. You know, um, my sister and I decided, like, okay, it's just the two of us going to Disneyland. It's really dumb to be in separate photos. So we'll buy a selfie stick, okay? I spent quite a bit of time looking for a cheap one because I didn't want to spend a lot of money. And um, so I found one for $5.99. I thought that was a good deal. <clears throat> and uh, so we carted off ourselves to, to Disneyland, and um, <laughs> you go through security at Disneyland. And they said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have this. <laughs> and I looked at them and I went, what? He said, no, you can't, we can't allow selfie sticks in the park. They're dangerous. And I'm going like, Okay. <laughs> and they said, we'll hold it here. We'll put it in the lost and found thing. You can, here's a tag. You can come back for it at the end of the night. I said, okay, I probably will do that because it was $5.99. <laughs> in which we did. We stood in line for 15 minutes to get my $5.99 selfie stick back. But hey. Um, but you look around and everybody's taking photos of everything and everyone. But no matter how good the photography is, it is never as good as the experience of you actually seeing it face to face. We saw the most amazing, and I'm going to show it to Chris anyway, amazing display of Walt Disney, because every time he does Christmas lights, many years ago I said, look, I just want it like Disneyland. And Chris said, Linda, we're not Disneyland. And I'm going, I know, but we're getting close. And so, so, um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> As I'm seeing this video mapping all down Main Street and on the castle and the fireworks, I'm just going like, whoa, you know, and you can't capture that on video. There's a presence of God that you can't capture through anybody else or on television. Or anyway. It's an experience with God on a day-to-day -day basis. Only you can experience the presence of God to actually know what the presence of God is. We, the disciples, could see what Jesus did. They experienced it, and they passed that on to others. But others then had to experience Christ for themselves, just like you and I. A video doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't count. It's like, oh, that's really nice. I showed it to John last night. He goes, wow, that's that's amazing. That's impressive. But he didn't experience it. We can sit by and go, oh, isn't Jesus amazing? But unless you experience him, you're just going to be amazed. And the disciples, have we not seen? Have we not heard? So it's you and I to carry on Christ into this season. We've got to continually be filled with him to experience him, but also to promote him to others. When we have Christmas lights, it's just not about, oh, look at our lights, and look at our thing. No, we've got, to, we've got to infuse Christ into everyone that comes. We've got to welcome them as if it was Christ welcoming them. We've got to experience the love that we have for one another. It says, they shall know me by the love you have for one another. How well do we serve one another is that that's what the world's looking for. <laughs> Alyssa and I coming back with five suitcases, two car seats, and a stroller. And so poor little Miley, she was a Trojan. Here she is pushing Ezekiel in the stroller with one of the um, carry-ons and a backpack on her. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> As we're walking between the international airport, well, in Los Angeles from the domestic to the international, and then again when we got to Auckland from the international to the domestic, and here's this little five-year-old Trojan going like this with a stroller, <clears throat> and we're pushing and we're lugging. Not one person helped us. In all of our journey of trying to get a 50-pound bag onto a conveyor belt or on top of another suitcase, <clears throat> and I was marveled. I mean, I really was like... 
because I'm one of these aware persons. I don't know if you know that. You know, I kind of look at the scenario and the awareness. And every traveler is fixed on where they're to be, what they're to do. And they have nothing, no awareness of anybody of a need. If I help them, well, then I'm going to lose my place. If I help them, then I might not be able to, you know, whatever. <clears throat> and so we were almost, we are about halfway to the domestic side. And it's really hard because the, Miley can't see over the stroller bars. So this is her and Ezekiel driving down the sidewalk, okay? And we're going like, watch out, Miley. Oh, there's people over there. You know, just follow the green line. So we think it just looked down. But instinctively, you don't want to do that. But all she had to do was keep on looking at the green line. But her little cart was going here and there and everywhere. And so finally, this couple, I mean, people were passing us, walking to the domestic side, you know. It's supposed to take 10 minutes. It took us much longer than 10 minutes. But finally, this woman who just had a purse and her husband that was pushing their luggage, she said, I'll help you. And she just steadied alongside Miley and walked us to the domestic side. And so out of all the travel that we did, the very end, halfway point, somebody, all that, that was just a guiding hand. In our life, if we don't keep focused on our path and we don't allow the guiding hand of Jesus to guide us, we're not going to find our way. We're going to miss our plane. And in all of that, got checked in. We had less than 10 minutes to get to, our, our, to the plane. So all those connections can easily be missed. We can miss so much in our life because we're, we're overpacked, which we were. Well, actually, on the dot, every suitcase, 50 pounds. And, um, <clears throat> but in our life, we can carry a lot of extra stuff. And we're looking over here, and we're looking over there, and we're steering this thing this way. And, the, the, you know, just life goes on, and we're over here, and there's one crisis over here, and then we're looking over here, and there's another crisis over here. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your eye. You know, we had a green line to lead us all the way. Where are your eyes focused at this time of year? Is it about your Christmas dinner? Is it about your family? Is it about who, what gifts you're going to get? And all of that's important to the fest uh, festival or the, you know, in, in the time of Hanukkah, they gave gifts. Gifts giving isn't wrong. That's not a problem to God. But why do we do what we do? Let's focus on that. Um, John 10, 20, verse 30, 31, the disciples saw Jesus do many other miracles, signs in addition to the ones recorded in his book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. So it's for us, the word of God is not just Jesus as a person, it is this word and it's established for you and I to believe. We are the Bible read by most people in our family. They'll never pick up the Bible. So therefore, are you close enough to the word to be a reflection of Jesus? Are we able to live our life in accordance with the word so much that people go, okay, I understand what a Christian is. I don't have a doubt when I look at your life. I get it. You don't have to preach words to me. Your life preaches to me. Number three, he existed from the beginning. The word was not one of the created things, but existed before creation. The word accomplished the first creation. If the word created the world, he can recreate us into his image. Corinthians 3.18, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. I love that. I was getting ready today. Sorry it's so personal, but anyway. Um, I was getting ready today. And while I was over in the States, I, I got up in the morning, and, and you have to understand, Arizona is as, it's a desert, it's dry. 
So you go from here, which is quite moist and humid, to getting the very life sucked out of you. You know, it's like your skin goes, you know. And, and I looked in the mirror, and I was there, and I had bags underneath my eyes, and I had wrinkles, and I was going like, what is my problem? I'm supposed to be refreshed. I'm supposed to be, you know, younger than ever. And I was at the store with my mom and, and uh, buying a new cover for my eye, iPad, and... <laughs> My mom says, oh, I'll put the trolley over there. And, and the lady, beautiful black lady behind the couch, she goes, oh, you can tell your sister just to um, leave it here. <laughs> She's my mom, you know. I was like, really? I knew she was older than you. And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> She's 81. <laughs> and I'm going like, are you saying that I'm old? Are you saying that she's young and she's, yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> but, but anyway, I'm going, oh, my goodness, I feel really old. And I thought, why, what is the problem, you know? And I feel like, oh, my goodness, I see more wrinkles here and I have bags here. So anyway, this morning when I was getting ready, I'm going like, I know what it is. I've only got one light in my bathroom that works. <laughs> So all this time I'm thinking I'm looking pretty good and I've only got one light in my bathroom that works. So as I was getting ready this morning, I'm going, I can't even see. No wonder I don't think I have wrinkles. So in light of this, this is how we live our life. So many of us are living in darkness and we don't even realize it. So, so many times we don't even see the sin in our own life because we don't have enough of Christ reflecting to actually see there's issues and see there's problems. And so we just got to experience that the Spirit of God, the love of God, the, the light of God is Jesus, and he wants us to be his reflection. The Word was with God. The Word with denotes an intimate relationship the word Jesus was partnering with God. He is distinct from God, but the, he is the word of God. The word is God. This reveals the deity of Jesus. He is the glory of God seen by man. God's glory is the sum up of all his perfection and attributes. Let us see Jesus. Let us focus in on him. The word became flesh. He came in humility. Jesus knows completely our trials. He lived amongst us, lived with us, and we have seen his glory. I was thinking about this because our niece, um, Tiffany, has just given birth to a baby, and Tiffany is older than Andrew, and she's, they've never had uh, kids, and so this is their first new little baby. And seeing a, a new mom later in life is quite interesting, you know, and, and uh, so careful. I mean, her whole Tiffy was, you know, kind of just kind of go here. Yeah, she'll be right. You know, and she's just really cautious and she's extremely slow and patient and kind. And, and I got to thinking now about baby Jesus and the humility by which he came to this earth as a baby, helpless, completely entrusting his life into the care of his mother Mary. In my reflection about that, I thought, you know what? Nothing has changed. Oh, yes, Jesus grew up as the son of man. He died that cruel death on the cross. He was buried and rose again. But we still carry Jesus. He came in humility and he remains in humility because he allows us to represent him. The marvel and the mystery of God that he is still that same Jesus who is so aware to walk amongst us then that he still walks amongst us now. And it's our responsibility to be the nurturing mother, so to speak, of the presence of God so the world might know that he exists and he is God. Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 through 30. My father has entrusted everything to me. 
No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Verse 28, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. God's glory is full of grace and truth. John 13, 31, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. So as we begin this holy season, <clears throat> let's remember him, the Son of God, the Son of Man, our Savior. Just as Hanukkah was not a feast established by God, it's one of the many feasts that the Jewish people observe that has not been established by God. God had Passover, he has the uh, Feast of Trumpets, there are all these feasts that God established. But this one was established by God's holy people. And it was established by them because they experienced God's miracle when the candle, when they were restoring the temple, and the candle, I mean the oil, there was only enough oil for one candle for one day. And they lit that candle and every day, eight days, that candle, it was there was enough to light the other ones. It lit for eight days, in other words. That's a miracle. And so that's what, they, um, that's what they're remembering is it's the Feast of Lights. It's when God did this miracle in the restoration of the temple and turned the light back on and kept it on supernaturally. Now, you and I are the reflectors of him. And on this day of Hanukkah, December 6, 2015, the message is for you and I is to shine our light. But just as a light can go dim and burn out, the oil of the Holy Spirit can keep us lit. And may we be lit not just for eight consecutive days, but throughout our life. Let's build a tradition in our hearts and our lives, not to have this Jesus as our light, a singular light, but a festival of lights. He penetrates any amount of darkness, of soul, of sin, of disease in our lives. He is the light of the world. Isaiah 9, verse 2, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. You shall multiply the nations. You shall increase their gladness. They will be glad in your presence as with the gladness of harvest. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil, for you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff on their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor as a battle of Midian. For every boot of the booted warrior in the battle and the cloak rolled in blood will be burning, fuel for the fire. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Who do you know to be the king? Who do you know to be the child? And who do you know to be your savior? Is it Jesus? Is it the festival of lights? So let's rededicate and purify our hearts, our temple today. Let's rededicate our lives to him afresh. Let's actually go, oh God, <laughs> here I am. Your life was in ruins, bought and paid for by sin. And Jesus, your Redeemer, lives. And he came and redeem, redeemed your life and my life. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for... God, this opportunity, once again, Lord, to 
say, here I am, Lord. Here's my life. And just as, Lord, a couple thousand years ago, Lord, your temple was in the hands of the oppressor that's broken down. God, so was our life at some stage in the hands of the oppressor. And Lord, you've come with your light. You've come with your forgiveness. You've come with your power. And God, you have set us free. And God, I pray now that as we rededicate our temple, our lives before you, Lord, help us to shine, God. Help us to burn bright every single day, Lord, to relight our candle. Lord, some of us, Lord, that depend on Sunday to Sunday to relight our candle, oh God, help us to light our candle every day. Lord, to burn brighter for you. Lord, help us trim our wicks. And Lord, help us to renew our oil, God, of your spirit in our lives. Father, give us light, I pray. Give us your life in us. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a real, real privilege to be back. And, and it's time now to um, take up the offering. Um, that you've been told about as a Christmas offering, and it is time to just say, as Christ gave so much of, of um, his life for us, at this time, let us remember others that need that grace and that mercy, need maybe a helping hand. There were four different times in my travels of just being in a store or out on, uh, prior to walking in the store, where somebody actually came up to me and asked me for money. I was shocked. You see them on the side of the road when you stop, you know, they used to wash your windows, now they just ask for money. So you see the panhandlers, but for people to actually walk up to me, and ask for money. I was, wow. <laughs> and my heart every time was torn between kind of what, what I really have to offer you. My couple dollars isn't going to change your life. I can offer you Jesus. And how challenged I was at those moments in time. Do I give the money or not? But in our situation here, I know that when you give money today, that it will go to somebody who's truly in need. We know them. We can help them. We can strengthen their arms at this time. And we can give them hope. You're not giving to strangers. You may not know them, but they won't be strangers to us or to our community. So as you give today, be blessed. Amen.
have a guest for you that hasn't arrived yet. And, um, but as we were just contemplating what to do right there, we have a few moments. And I just think it'd be really good if we prayed one for another and use this time to, maybe you need strength in today. Maybe it's you that actually goes like, man, I need God. I need, I need His fresh, freshness. So we're still, that's good. We're still gonna pray. So um, why don't you just um, turn to your neighbor next to you and say, how can I pray for you? How can I give you my, my support at this time? So let's just pray one for another and I'll get Jackie ready here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. And Jackie, come on up. Jackie Baldwin is, I, for some of you, you might remember her. She ministered here at Christmas time. We were just trying to work out. It was about 2008 or 2009. And it's really cool because we haven't really seen each other. And um, she watches us on Facebook, and we do the same. <laughs> and uh, so she had seen David being in Chicago. And she, on David's Facebook, she said, oh, I've missed you. I'm going to be in Tauranga over the weekend. And so I'm seeing that going like, why are you in Tauranga? you got to come. And uh, so we're privileged to have Jackie. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What child is this who lays to on Mary's lap is sleeping. Oh, angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds watch is keeping. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. 
some rich and poor to own him. The King of Kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels Silent stars go by, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. So felt its worth, a thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious last time? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. She'll be singing in our next service as well. But, you know, with that, as oh, holy night, let's just remember and reflect Jesus and love him and build some real keen, perfect traditions. You might want to start lighting a candle every night to reflect on the goodness of God in your life. Father, I thank you. God, we pray for everybody now to sign up for that choir. Lord, if we could just sing with Jackie, we'd sign up to the choir. <laughs> so, so, Lord, be with us, Lord, and I pray that, um, God, we will ever shine brighter for you and give you glory. Amen. Don't forget to come out tonight. It's our last Sunday night service for the year, and uh, so it'll be praise and worship and uh, prayer. So come on out as we pray for Christmas lights. Bless you.